There has been a lot of speculation surrounding Ben Simmons' debut, and the recent update given by the Nets coach isn't promising at all. Let's get into whether or not Simmons will be debuting and other NBA news that's been making rounds. First up, Simmons seems to not be ready to debut just yet. As the Nets had initially anticipated, Ben Simmons wasn't ready for full team work on Sunday. From the looks of it, he won't be ready for quite a while. On March 3rd, Sean Marks, the Nets general manager, said he hoped his prized new acquisition could be taking part in team activities by the end of this week. However, as reported by the Post on Saturday, Simmons was not going to practice fully because he's several steps away, not just one. Steve Nash, who is the coach for the Nets, has said the player isn't even ready for five-on-five, let alone one-on-one. Nash says Simmons has to get to a point where he can go full speed on a post, and he hopes it's quickly. Simmons is rapidly running out of time to get in sync with his new team, and his prognosis is fairly stark from the looks of it as of right now. Before clearing them to play, the Nets' performance team usually demands players make it through three high-intensity workouts without incident. So even once he has cleared all of those hurdles, there are several more waiting for him. Now, one wonders if he'll even be practicing fully by March 18th to play against the Trailblazers, or three days later versus the Jazz. It seemed like a viable goal once for his season debut, but playing by the end of the month isn't plausible with how things are progressing. When did Simmons last play? Since the 76ers' playoff exit last June, Simmons hasn't played an NBA game. They acquired him in the deadline day deal of James Harden, so he had been holding out the season citing mental health issues and has been ramping up with the Nets since. Getting full clearance to practice from the Nets' performance team delayed him when that ramping up hit a road bump due to Simmons' back tightening up. Nash has stated that the little setback is being overcome and they're just trying to make sure that they get that in the bag before they rush him out there and suffer a longer setback. During Saturday's practice, Simmons was limited to ball handling, light cutting, and just a little bit of shooting. During the part of the practice that was open to the media, he was being worked on by training staff and getting treatment. Next, Simmons back holding him back. This isn't the first time Simmons is suffering a setback due to his back. When the 2019-20 season was interrupted by COVID-19, he had missed eight straight games and was receiving daily treatment for nerve issues in his lower back. During a February 22nd game at Milwaukee in the next season, he suffered nerve impingement in his lower back. The 76ers coach at the time, Brett Brown, recalled that Simmons was vomiting from the back pain. Moreover, during his falling out with the 76ers, Simmons had another flare-up afterwards, and now, since the February 10th trade to Brooklyn, another during his ramp-up. Whether it's fair to classify Simmons as having a bad back is the question at hand. Nash has been on the fence regarding this because he doesn't want to misclassify, but he admits that Simmons has had back issues at times. He doesn't know if it's fair to say that Ben has a bad back. The coach continued to say he was really healthy for the last six months until the flare-up of something, and he doesn't think it's fair for him to reduce the problem down to him having back problems. On Thursday in Philadelphia, he simply drove to meet them for the game instead of flying with the team. The reason Simmons didn't travel with the team to Boston and Charlotte was cited by the Nets as sparing that back from multiple plane flights. Getting that return out of the way may have been cathartic for Simmons, as stated by fellow Aussie Patty Mills. He also said that there was probably a lot of weight off his shoulders just to be able to face all of it. Mills says Simmons handled it really well. According to Mills, he had a lot of people that he was the focus of in the arena that night, even though he wasn't playing. Mills says that considering how now all of that is over with, Simmons can focus on getting himself ready and getting him back with the team on the floor. Mills wholeheartedly believes that Simmons is that last little piece to their team that will be a force to reckon with once he does get onto the court. Now in other NBA news, LeBron, solitary member of the 30-10-10 club. In NBA history to accumulate at least 10,000 points, 10,000 rebounds and 10,000 assists, the first player is LeBron James. Since only seven players have ever reached 30,000 points, it's not just that no player has ever accumulated 30,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, and 10,000 assists in their career. There is still not another player in NBA history to reach the career triple quintuple, even if the scoring threshold has dropped to 10,000. LeBron has had a contentious relationship with the scoring label throughout his career. He was adamant that he did not want to be referred to as a scorer when he passed Jordan as the NBA's top playoff scorer of all time. His playmaking and rebounding numbers suggest, and the eye test proves on a nightly basis, that LeBron is much more than a scorer and impacts all aspects of the game. LeBron's one of the best of all time when it comes to the scoring aspect of his game at the same time. No player has ever matched the level of consistent excellence and longevity that has been seen from LeBron, even though he doesn't have Jordan's 10 scoring titles or the incredible scoring peaks of players like Wilt. The fact that he's in contention for a second scoring title this late into his career is simply unheard of. No no other player has more than 11 such seasons, and he's on his 19th with one of the highest scoring averages in over a decade, set on the path to this being his 18th straight year, with him averaging at least 
25 points, and he's still increasing that average at 37 years old. LeBron already owns the fifth highest scoring average in league history, and no player comes close to matching LeBron's production and efficiency this deep into their career. Next, Garnett sheds a tear watching Celtics retire his number. On Sunday, alongside the 2008 NBA championship banner he helped win after arriving in Boston, Kevin Garnett helped hoist his number five to the TD Garden rafters with a couple of curses, a primal scream, and a few tears too. Garnett became the 24th person in franchise history to have his number retired on a day that featured live and video tributes from ex-teammates, former Celtics greats, other NBA A-listers, and even musician Kenny G. The former Celtics player brought quite the combination of intensity, hard work, and humor when he joined Paul Pierce and Ray Allen for a new big three that ended the longest title drought in franchise history that none of the previous honorees had. Garnett was presented with a piece of the original parquet floor, a custom bottle of tequila, a portrait of him popping a Celtics jersey and an NFT gift basket by the Celtics, which he accepted with tears streaming down his cheeks as his daughters joined him as he raised the banner to the rafters. They included five of his 15 career All-Star appearances and the 2008 championship and the 17th for the Celtics, even though Garnett played only six seasons in Boston. He was the 2004 MVP with Minnesota, which is where he started and ended his 21-year NBA career. Lastly, Lopez to return to Bucks lineup. On the defensive end this season, Lopez's presence was missed by the Bucks, but they're ready to welcome him back now. On Monday when they play at Utah, Brooke Lopez will make his long-awaited return to the Bucks lineup as announced by the team. Before undergoing back surgery, the former All-Star and All-Defensive Center had played just one game for Milwaukee this season, which was the Bucks' home opening win against the Nats. The Bucks' slippage on the defensive end coincided with Lopez's absence. While blunting opponents' interior scoring with his length, positioning, and timing, his rim protection was vital in the Bucks' 2021 championship run as he averaged 13 points points and 5.9 rebounds in that postseason. George Hill, the reserve guard, will return to action Monday as announced by the Bucks. However, with a torn anterior cruciate ligament and medial collateral ligament, reserve four DeAndre Bembry will miss the rest of the season. With neck soreness, Hill has missed the Bucks' last 16 games. After leaping to defend a three-point attempt Saturday night in the Bucks' loss at Golden State, Bembry injured his knee when he landed awkwardly. Appearing for eight Bucks games on February 16th, Bembry was signed to Milwaukee. The Bucks seek to make one last run at the East top seed with Lopez and Hill's respective returns. That's all for now, folks, but we'll be back with more interesting videos. Thanks for watching!